channel you're watching with wombat and this is a re-record because the previous reaction video i recorded had an audio error that i couldn't fix so here i am again i had planned for doing like a christmas day upload but uh you know now it's after christmas and the holiday is just about over but here we are anyway and i hope you're all are still in a festive move we are going to continue our rewatch of star trek lower decks so i recall last week was the deep space nine episode an episode that i had been looking forward to the entire show and it did not disappoint you know with major kira and quark to a lesser degree it was everything i could have asked for in a deep space nine lower decks crossover we learned a little bit about tendy and her complex relationship with her culture as an Orion. Everything we knew about the Orion Syndicate we got from very briefly in TOS. And then, I don't know if we learned anything about Orions in Next Generation, but we learned quite a bit about the Orion Syndicate in Deep Space Nine. And I think they made a brief appearance also in Enterprise. But uh, we learned that Orions are generally perceived as a culture of pirates and thieves and such. And Tendi is not like that, of course. Uh, meanwhile... <laughs> Meanwhile, Mariner got to know Jennifer's friends, and that didn't disappoint either. I mean, it was a horrifying social situation. Any introvert like myself would be terrified to find ourselves in, which was interesting because Mariner, I don't think Mariner is an introvert, but she found it a very daunting experience, and she handled it the way I wish I could have handled those experiences. It's not that I don't want to be social. I do. I want to make friends and strengthen current relationships, but I'm just really really bad at prolonged social exposure. I'm an introverted wombat. So moving away from that really quickly, it's been a tough week. Something went afoul with my foot and now I'm on a combination of crutches, walking cane, a boot, Ow! and a little bitty scooter to try to get around because I can't walk around on my left foot because it's- Hey everybody, old man wombat coming at you at the speed of a Drunken wombat foot because it's messed up. And ugh, if you've ever had a foot injury, you know that it's just about as frustrating an injury as one can get because now it's a huge, huge hassle to go anywhere. So now I may hop along wombat too. Anyway, we are just going to go right into it. Um, so, like I said, because I had an audio issue with my last record. This is not the first time I'm watching this episode. This is the second time I'm watching the episode, but I'm still going to. I'm going to do my best. I do remember I really, really enjoyed this episode a lot. So hopefully I'll still have a lot to say. But no more delays. Let's dive right into it. Star Trek Lower Decks, Season 3, Episode 7. A mathematically perfect redemption? Previously on Star, Star Trek, Trek Lower Decks. Decks. And I remember the first time I watched this that I wanted to go back and see if, in, if this footage actually appeared in the Season 1 finale. Peanut Hamper. Hey! You know, I said I've seen this episode, I, but yet sorry, I can't I can't get over the hilarity of Peanut Hamper's name. Whoa. We're all going to die! Peanut Hamper! There are so many lives at stake! Was Rutherford going through, like, a whole bunch of different accents there? R.I.P. Shax. Now they're all going to die. Hey there, Whoa. Titan. Titan! In the beautiful, brilliant, super artistic... Such a huge difference in mood between this and what's to follow. But it's so it's so beautiful. The um how they changed the opening theme song. Oh, it was really short. Yeah, yeah mathematically perfect for redemption. That's what's called. Peanuts. It was my first day. They expect me to stop. See simply because it's day. Peanut Hamper's first day, I suspect that Peanut Hamper did not appear in the season one finale. I scraped up enough dilithium to juice it to warp factor 0.02, maybe 0.03. Where are you gonna get anywhere at warp 0.02? Uh, look, I hope you know that whatever happens out there, you've got a friend for life. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. I think that how the song goes, I'm not sure. Uh -oh. And I do remember thinking that with a collapsed warp bubble, Peanut Hamper's little craft should have been torn apart. But hey, what do I know about warped field physics? What? Rattan? What the? What is okay. rattan supposed to mean? I feel like I should know what rattan stands for or whatever, but I just don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot how even more inappropriate than usual this episode is. 
By inappropriate, I mean just, just not for kids. But I'm kind of sensing that everyone here hates me. See, not hate. Kind of looked like hate. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't remember the exocomps being able to replicate something. Peanut hamper is so are these supposed to be like hawk people? Because I'm pretty sure there was like a hawk cry. Father. Ah, uh, yeah, this Rauda with his amazing four pack. Father, I... six. I am next pack? to be the villain. It's a four pack, but he's he's pretty ripped otherwise. In the flying goat. Personal log. Sky goat. Sky pig with beaks. The music for this episode is just great. It's just such a great. Uh, it makes me uncomfortable. Yes, I worked on a farm for a couple of days when I was younger, so I know I know it needs to be done, but. Nah. Okay, okay, hold still. I said hold still, damn it! Really, not liking peanut hamper. This is the incubation hut. Now what, what what was that supposed to be? Like like a phaser on the lowest setting? Spread beam? I don't know what it's supposed to be. Oh, peanut hamper. I can't help but be full of song when I'm with you. Oh. Wow. That was harsh. I had plans to get away to Free Cloud, become a Dabo girl. Was Free Cloud one of the planets in, in season one of Picard? Oh, I long for the touch of your nozzle. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what that was supposed to be, but different. that was hilarious. Uh. <laughs> those flying turtles? In the distant past, the Aerior were a spacefaring species. You guys have had technology this entire time? It only brought them misery and war. Like the Batu. Species. Batu? From uh, Star Trek Interaction? Now, fast forward montage. They're Friend. getting married. Friend. Our scans show that valuable material lays. Have we seen this race before? It looks so familiar. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, baby. Or but you aren't even a few. You're just one. Right. That ship is real. I mean, that little shuttle is really tough. Shouldn't it have exploded? What the f is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but now I understand love and sacrifice. I, I feel a call to duty. Chrissy, little robot. Peanut butter. <laughs> Peanut butter. So simple, but still so funny. Feel free to come on over and take whatever you want. Everyone here is a tree kissing farmer. Oof. There won't be any pushback. It's just disappointing. I wasn't going to spend the rest of my very long robotic life on a freaking bird planet. Dude. How could you? Oh, okay. Smell you later. Oh yeah, and I mean that literally. Ugh. It's super, super frustrating. Damn. Back to dry dock for the Cerritos. For the flock! How does he know how to fly that? How does anybody know how to fly those things? You know who I should have called? The boards! That's low. It's really, really low. Peanut hamper, is it? We've met him before, too. I must what? say, that's a mathematical. Yes, it's Wei Yun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow. I really enjoyed this episode, but it's so hard to talk about. It, it was hard to talk about even, even when I watched it the first time because it focused like exclusively on this, this other character, this lower decks of the lower decks officer, uh, Peanut Hamper. I'm assuming Peanut Hamper was an officer. Did they say? I don't remember. But anyway, like we don't spend time with our, any of our usuals. So I can't talk about like Mariner or Boimler or Tendi. It was a remarkably interesting episode that they went in this direction. They decided to turn the focus away from our main characters, just like uh, Next Generation did on the Lord Dex episode. Focused on focused on characters who were not part of the main cast. Very meta. Very, very interesting. And of course, like there was a lot of beautiful artwork, especially in the beginning, the, the, the introduction 
the music. The music was great all around. Like I think it was like all new music. It, it was none of the usual lower decks themed music, and it was great. It was a great job. It made me, but it made me think a lot about like like I was in the middle of a D and D campaign. The music, not the episode itself. Uh, but that's that's great. There's nothing wrong with that either. The only the only thing I didn't enjoy was the journey or the lack of journey for Peanut Hamper because I. You know, I really, really disliked Peanut Hamper in the beginning, and then it seemed she was learning, you know, and growing, and I liked that a lot. But then it turned out that it was all an act. At least that's how I interpreted it, that it was all an act. Like, there was a there was a moment where I thought maybe it was a genuine turn, like when Rauda takes her to look at the the ships of, of their ancestors, and Peanut Hamper just, like, lays down her entire flawed history and i'm like why why bother doing that if you're just trying to play these people anyway you could say anything about yourself you you don't have to tell the truth and you could still play these people but she told the truth and i thought that there was a reason for that beyond just helping to sell her her story but nope there was no better reason for that except to lean harder into you know the misdirection of the audience but again like i found that disappointing because well, even the episode like suggested anyway i guess it didn't promise that there was going to be a redemption arc it said was it a mathematically perfect redemption and i guess it was because peanut hamper was turning her redemption arc into like a math equation like a plus B equals, you know, C, the result that she wants, which is to be redeemed in the eyes of Starfleet. And yeah, I guess in that case, the title of the episode was spot on because it was a mathematically perfect redemption, except for being discovered at the end. It was just disappointing. You know, I wanted, like, I don't care if Peanut Hamper appears ever again in this show, although I do remember wondering if it's possible that Peanut Hamper turns out to be, like, the big bad at the very la- at the very end, especially with the other self-aware machines but anyway i just wanted it to be a worthwhile journey and how is it going to be a worthwhile journey if there's no growth i mean yes it's a comedy yes this show is you know hyper comedic but there's still growth in our characters you know mariner and boimler tendy rutherford they all learn something a little bit of something they don't just remain i don't know uh it's a it's a minor gripe but it's a gripe Despite all that, though, I I will repeat that I did enjoy this episode a lot. And I hope that you enjoyed my reaction to it, even though this is, like I said, my second time through. Hopefully, I don't have to do this a third time, because if I have to do this a third time, I just, I just, I don't know if I can do this a third time. Cross my fingers that the audio uh, issue I encountered earlier has resolved itself. But anyway, thank you all so much for coming back to my channel. Please hit like and subscribe. Please tell your friends to check out my channel. Um... As we approach the end of Lower Decks, I really appreciate all of your views, all the times you view my channel, and any likes and comments. I love comments. Oh, man, I really love your comments. Please leave more comments. And everybody, have a happy, happy new year. I'll see you in 2023.